Hey guys, welcome to Skilllink. Every app or website that you come across is a result of a long line of code that gets compiled and made available in a way that it runs on your device. But today, we'll be exclusively talking about website development. Like every coin has two sides, to build a website, we similarly need two types of developers. One for the front end structure, while the other for the back end structure. One being indispensable without the other. Now, what are these front end and back end developers? Let's say you want to build a house for yourself. You naturally hire an architect who will give shape to your imagination, pen down your ideas and voila, you now have how your house looks like. But what about the implementation of the idea and who is it that will bring the thought that you have penned on paper into real life? Well, in that case, you require a civil engineer. Likewise, a front-end engineer or developer is someone who will create whatever it is that you see on your website. This includes the layout, the fonts, and colors that will be displayed on the website. On the other hand, a back-end developer will look into a place for storing the data, the security of your website, and build and maintain the website. Let's look into each of them in a bit of detail to get a better understanding of how this is achieved. Let's first look into front-end development. To understand this, on your screen, we have the website of Skilllink here, the page layout, the colors and text that is added for a user to navigate through is all a part of front-end development. Front-end development is also called client-side development. This is because this side directly interacts with the user or the client. To be able to build the front-end side of a website, one needs to know HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Now, how does each of these languages help? HTML makes sure that the text and images are formatted as needed in order to display them on the website. Then we have CSS. Given the different devices on which any web page is opened, a given web page can be opened on a laptop, a phone, or a tablet. CSS ensures that the web pages are displayed conformed to the different devices. CSS also changes text styles, table styles, and the layout of the page. Finally, JavaScript adds functionalities like search menus and checkboxes on the website. And with this, we have the front end of the website ready. Next, we have back end development. Let's say you've built the site, but how do you think you're going to store all the data that is on the website? Here is where a back end developer comes into play. The backend developer essentially manages data, performs calculations, and supports the website function. For example, say on your website, someone wants to purchase a commodity. To do this, when one clicks on the buy option, the backend side will first examine whether the buyer has a profile or not. If he does, they will open the purchase page. Otherwise, the website will prompt the buyer to first make an account. Backend development is also known as server-side development as this is the place where all behind-the-scenes action take place. But how does one create the backend of the website? Well, it can be done by knowing either Ruby, Python, Java, or PHP. Just to clear it out, Java is not the same as JavaScript. Java is an OOP programming language, while JavaScript is an OOP scripting language. Since the topic is very vast, we will cover it in another video. MySQL, Oracle, and SQL are other technologies that are used for accessing and storing voluminous data. Platforms such as WordPress use the open source management system, MySQL. MySQL gives users the authority to manage and create numerous databases. On the other hand, SQL is a relational database system. Here, the databases are arranged in rows and columns. The columns store a certain kind of data, while the rows represent a collection of related data. Oracle 2 uses a relational database management system. The difference between SQL and Oracle using RDBMS is in the language that they use. SQL uses transact language, while Oracle uses procedure language. Comparing the two, if you're someone who's interested in the creative side of things like designing and then watching it come to life, then you are definitely one with the inclination of becoming a front-end developer. However, if you are interested in algorithms and more towards the technical side of things, then you are more suited to become the back-end developer. Well, what if both pique your interest equally? Well, in that case, you can become a full-stack developer. A full-stack developer is a person who masters in both the field of front-end and back-end development. But to reach our destination, don't we all agree that we need to start somewhere? Well, to help you get the kickstart, 
we at Skillink are providing a course on full stack development, which will guide you through everything that you need to know and improve your skills on the field with timely assessments. If at any point you find yourself stuck, our technical engineers will always be there to help you out. We hope this video was informative and that you will come on board with us. To know more, check the link in the description. Until the next time, bye!